Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing well. Today's video is going to be about the differences between a training post and a non-training post for doctors in the UK. I recently made a video explaining the different grades and titles of doctors in the UK. I will leave a link to that video down below. This is a continuation or a part two of that video. So do check out that video as well. In the UK, there are mainly two types of post for doctors, a training post and a non-training post. A training post means that the doctor is in a training program that will lead to a CCT and they will eventually become a consultant. A non-training post means that the doctor is not in a training program. Titles such as FY1, FY2, CT1, CT2, ST1, ST2, IMT1, IMT2, SD3 to ST7 all refers to doctors in a training program. If the post has titles like Trust Grade, Clinical Fellow, Locum Appointment for Service, Resident Medical Officer, Associate Specialist, staff grade, it all refers to a non-training post. A non-training doctor and a training doctor can be the same grade. For example, a trust grade SHO and a FY2 can be the same grade. Their roles and responsibilities are the same. They also get the same amount of salary. Your salary is based on your grade, not whether you are in a training or a non-training post. The main difference between a training post and a non-training post is that a training post will lead you towards a CCT and you will become a consultant once you have completed the training program. A non-training post, on the other hand, will not necessarily lead you towards achieving this. A training post is much more intense and a lot more is expected from you. You are expected to be more enthusiastic, do more procedures and be more involved in things like clinical audits and quality improvement projects. A trust grade or a non-training doctor can be just as involved and motivated, but it is not normally expected. A non-training job can be more relaxed, if you know what I mean. There are some perks of being in a training post. For example, you get a study budget that you can use towards your training. When I was doing internal medicine training, I had around 800 pounds of study budget that I used towards attending MRCP PACES courses. You can use the study budget towards anything you want related to your training program. For example, gastroenterology trainees use their study budget to attend endoscopy courses. You can also use it to attend international conferences and things like that. In acute medicine, we have to do a special interest or a special skill. So some of my colleagues have used their study budget to pay for their diploma or master's. The budget you get will depend on your training program and the deanery. Some deaneries do not have a limit on the study budget as long as it is used towards something that is related to the training program or speciality. Also, doctors in a training post get more study leave compared to doctors in a non-training post. Normally, you use the study leave to attend regional training days, courses or seminars related to your speciality. These courses are normally organized by the deanery and some of them are compulsory as part of your training program. There are also benefits of working in a non-training post. It can be more flexible than working in a training post. You can have more say on when you want to take your annual leave. You can also avoid doing night shifts or on calls if you don't want to. In a training post, you can't avoid doing nights or on calls because it is part of your training program or your specialty curriculum. As a doctor, local or international, you can apply for a training post or a non-training post. The application for a training post is normally via Oriel and the application for a non-training post is via NHS Jobs for NHS Post. I will leave a link to both down below so you can check it out. A training post is much more competitive because understandably the number of training posts available is limited. I must mention that all training posts are in NHS hospitals, whereas non-training posts can be in NHS hospitals or in private hospitals, although most non-training posts are still in NHS hospitals. 
You can find job adverts for private hospitals on the BMA or on the Trust website. Doctors choose to do a non-trading job for lots of reasons. Some doctors do it because they are not really sure what speciality they want to pursue and they want more time to decide, so they take up a non-training job in the meantime. Some do it because they want a break from their training to focus on other life commitments. Lots of doctors, even local doctors, take up a non-training post to gain more experience in a particular speciality and to prepare their portfolio or CV for the specialty training applications. This is a very common thing to do, especially if you are applying for a competitive speciality. If you're coming to work here in the UK for the first time, I would highly suggest that you take up a non-training post for at least 6 to 12 months before entering a training program. This will help you gain NHS experience and let you get used to the new system. You can also use this time to prepare your CV and portfolio before you apply for your desired specialty training program. Having NHS experience will also help you succeed in the specialty interviews as well. The next thing I want to mention is that you can still enter the specialist register and become a consultant by working in a non-training job. This is via the CESA route. It will take a few years and you have to be very proactive, but it is still possible. I will leave a link to the CESA route down below so you can check it out too. Lastly, I want to address the misconception that training doctors are more respected and are more valued than non-training doctors. This is absolutely false. Both posts are equally respected and are given the same amount of credit. You gain acknowledgement and respect by your clinical performance, not by your title or post. I know so many doctors who are working in a non-training post and are performing well in their department. So don't ever feel inferior or less of a doctor if you are doing a non-training job. That is all for my video today. I hope you found this useful. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more videos and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!